Welcome back students to the course on Guide to Computer Forensics and Investigations. As part of the lab activities, we'll be covering this software called OS Forensics version 9. It's a trial version. You can download it 30 days trial version from their website. Uh, most of the functionalities are working in this one, but still we'll face some problems since it's a trial version. But we'll go through the software that how can we use it for investigative analysis. OS Forensics is considered to be one of the best softwares when it comes to investigate a case or for for forensics analysis. In the main interface of the software, you can see that there are some uh, key features which are available and you can directly access them from here. Otherwise, the features are appearing on your left hand side as well. In case if you are looking for a feature and you're not able to find it over here, you can search it in the search bar. Just like if I want to mount an image, it's an option appearing over here, which would help me in mounting an image uh, of the hard drive on this uh, software. Now let's start from the left hand side, auto triage, that's the first option, always name the case first before you start any investigative analysis. So you'll name a case first and then you'll write the name of the person who's investigating it. For example, if you want to investigate this computer on which we are working at the moment, you will choose the path where you want to store the case. Since the Windows is installed on the C drive, it's not recommended to create a case path of the file on the same directory. Thus, we'll select a different path and I have created another partition on the same computer uh, where we can save all the investigative analysis which are conducted on this computer. Once that's done, it would generate all the reports related to passwords, listings, deleted files and everything. And at the end, it would generate a PDF report and it would save it in the D drive. You can later go to the D drive or any other path where you're saving the file and you can open the file and read the contents of it. I'm not going to do it at the moment because it's a trial version and I have seen it's constantly crashing on my computer. Next option is in manage a case, first of all, you'll create a case over here. Whenever you're starting any investigation, the name of the case is very important. For example, we'll say network penetration, investigator name, we'll give it Mr. Sam, for example, organization, dummy data, and then we'll enter the details, which is the contact details, your time, and then you'll have to choose whether you're going for the live acquisition or you are investigating disks from another machine. It means that you can connect the hard drives on this computer. Again, we'll choose the path of the folder where we want to save the file. So since we'll be conducting it on the C drive, so I'll put it on a folder in the D drive but make sure that the folder is empty before you start the investigation. And then you'll enter the case categories, then offense and custody data, description of evidence, chain of custody, fill in all these details which are required. Once done, you can press OK. And it would create a case for you on the uh, desired location. Now. The second option which is appearing over here is that if you want to add a device, for example, I want to conduct an analysis on the D drive of this computer, or if I want to mount an image of a earlier created disk, I can do that as well. Or if there are multiple hard disks connected to the same computer, you can select it from here. So. It depends what kind of scenario you are in. Just simply press OK. It would show that it has selected the D drive. Next option is to create a forensics image. Now, if you want to create a forensics image, of course, we need to add a device or a drive over here. We have different options like create image, restore image, 
rebuild red disk create a logical image create logical android smart hidden and other options so we'll be creating an image over here first and in order to do that since we are creating an image of one of the drives on the same computer so i'll select for example the partition which i have created which is d drive and i'll name it drive d location place pc on the same computer and then you'll select the hash function either sha1 md5 crc always go for the latest ones which are recommended like md5 and then select sha256 and then press ok location oh we forgot to select the location of the target drive so we'll create the location since we are creating the image of our d drive so of course we'll create a folder on the desktop or in the c drive other than the d drive we'll say image of drive d and then we'll save an image in this one called d drive save it and then press ok now once that's done you can create an image of it and it has started creating an image error locking the drive that's fine now it's creating the image of it it really depends the size of your partition now since i'm doing it for the same partition on the computer which is of 2 or 2.5 gb so it won't take much time so if the hard disk is bigger of course it'll take more time than usual now as you can see imaging successfully completed direct copy right unlocked and if you'll check it on the directory you'll find the image which is created of 2.5 gb on the same c drive of the computer now in case you have a foreign disk which is not in this computer you can do the same thing that you can create an image of it and can save it somewhere just keep in mind that whenever we are investigating anything we always create an image of the hard drive we never work on the hard drive itself because we don't want to destroy or we don't want to change any evidence on the hard disk once that's done since you have created an image now i would like to mount the image and in order to mount the image you'll go to the mount drive image you'll mount new and then you'll select the image which you have created which is on your desktop in the folder called image d drive and you'll select the image and press next mount the entire image as a virtual disk press next read the options you can change them as per your own settings and then press mount so what it would do is that it would mount this drive in addition to the d drive on the computer and in order to check that you'll go to file explorer on the computer maximize it go to this pc and you'll be able to see now two D drives which are appearing one is that we have mounted and the other one is which is the actual D drive if you will open this mounted drive you'll be able to see the same data which was there in the actual D drive so that's how we mount a drive and then we conduct the analysis on this one you'll have all the different options appearing just like a regular hard disk or a partition on the computer now if you want to disconnect this drive you'll simply click it and click dismount and all and exit so it would dismount all hard drives which you have connected to this machine and if you open file explorer again you won't be able to see the drive appearing here now it's only one D drive which is the actual drive appearing on this computer now next thing is if you want to add a device 
um, I have shown it already. We have created the image, boot a virtual machine. If you have an image of a virtual machine from VMware or VirtualBox, you can simply connect it to the software and it would mount it so that you can see the contents of it. Now file system browser, if for example you want to browse the contents of a directory, you can simply select it over here and click OK. It would show the contents of it over here. Now the question arises that if we can see the contents of the D drive directly by going to the D drive over here or if we'll go to the details of it, why do we need to check it in the file explorer over here? But if you'll compare the options that we have in OS forensic software and in the Windows default options, you can see that we have only name, date modified, type and size appearing over here. Whereas if we will check it on OS Forensics, we will have lots of other options which are appearing in this one. For example, the type of it, date modified, date created, date accessed, MFT date, size of it, size on disk and so on. This information is very important if you are conducting any kind of investigative analysis. And then of course you can check these options which are appearing on top depending how much details you want and you can get it from here. Okay. Now we have file viewer. It's the same thing that it's giving you lots of details for the files which are there on the computer with the time stamp and everything. In most of the cases, if the computer was compromised or someone tried to access it remotely, you can see a change in the date and time of an individual file. From there, you can identify that this specific file has been identified when you sort them according to the date. Now next is system information that would give you the information about the current system and uh, what's going on. For example, if I will select the C drive and I will select the options over here like scan the C drive, it would start the scanning process and it would show you the details of the computer and rest of the things. Now for the memory viewer, if you want to see that how many processes are running on the computer, you'll be amazed to see the detailed report which is appearing on the OS forensic screen. You can check different handles, modules, space and other. If you select a thing, it would show you for a specific item the details under it. But if you'll see the Windows Task Manager, and if you will compare it with the details of OS Forensics, we hardly get any details up here, quite limited, which is not enough for investigative analysis. So in order to see a complete view of what's going on in the computer, how many processes are running, and if you can identify a process which is not a Windows process and is running over here, you can identify that that's the application or a uh, script which has been installed by a third party. You can further filter it over here like working set, memory or commuted memory, executive code, etc. You can refresh it and you can even have a static analysis of it by a memory dump or anything like that. Now user activity shows us the recently opened files on the computer. Now if you think that someone tried to access a computer remotely, of course if they are opening any files or if they have accessed any features or anything inside the computer, it would keep a log of each and everything in the user activity. I am not running the task at the moment because uh, it usually crashes the software since it's a trial version. The next option we have over here is for passwords. If you want to find out in a live acquisition or in the C or D drive, 
that if there are any passwords for Windows login, generate a rainbow table, or retrieve the passwords with the rainbow table, decryption passwords, and other options are appearing over here. So it would simply list them over here. After that, we have file name search. If we want to search a specific file on the computer, for example, start.txt, and I want to search it in the D drive and press OK and let's scan. It would show me a list of all text files on the D drive with all details and attributes of the files. Now if I want to have a deleted file search on my D drive, you'll select the drive over here and then you'll scan. So it would show you all the files that were there but deleted from the D drive. You can simply, uh, simply click on that one, go right click on it, go to the properties, export item to text file or get the options about the timeline, scan status, file status and file details. It would give you all the details about when the file was created and deleted, what was the size of it and all the relevant information. Now next is mismatch file search. You can have certain wildcards over here. If you are scanning a file or if you want to find a file specifically on the C drive or the D drive, you can have certain flags on it that if the files are not matching this thing, that's how you find out. Now program artifacts would show you the applications which are installed or the processes which are running on your computer. You can drag them further and it's giving you all details. If you go to AM Cache Viewer, it would show you the registry key, publisher, version, path and the file name and if you click on it, you'll get all the relevant information over here. Further, if you'll go to the device containers, PNPs, drivers, install directories, each and everything would be appearing over here. Now, if you'll click on Raw Disk Viewer, it would show us the, the hex code of the drive that we are investigating. For example, if you'll select the D drive over here, you'll see the all hexadecimal code is appearing for the hard drive for investigative analysis. If you are using any email program, you can simply load the PST file, which is Outlook file, or OST file, which is Microsoft Exchange file, or any other email client for investigative analysis. If you click on Create Index, it would create an index file of all the files which are there on your computer, for example, emails, attachments, each and everything, and it would generate a file. Search index would search for all the index files and they'll be sorted by images, attachments, timeline or history, etc. Now signature shows you the signature of the files. Now signature helps us in comparing the signature of a drive so that we can compare that if there were any changes made to the hard drive. For example, we have a D drive on this computer and initially we'll simply create a signature of the drive. It would ask us that where we want to save it, we'll call it test, call it test 01 and it would save the signature of it. Now we'll go to the D drive of the computer and we'll try to delete one file and we'll create another test file, say testing. Hi, this is purpose, save it, and then let's delete one file from here. Now, once that's done, again we'll try to create a signature of this one and we'll save it as test2 and then there is an option to compare the signature 
you will add the signature as test 1 and the second one as test 2 and then you will compare so it would tell you that there is a new file which is created and there is a file which is deleted so that's how you can find out that what's the difference in between the two signatures and you can identify if any files were changed on that specific directory now for analyze shadow copies that's for virtual drives that you have if you want to add the device and investigate them next is file hashing now this is very important because it helps us in comparing the hashes between a file folder volume or a specific directory for example if we want to create a hash set of our directory d we'll open it and select a file for example test copy 2 since we have selected a file we want to check sha 512 and md5 and we'll calculate so it would give us a calculated hash of it which you can copy it or save it so that you can compare it with the hash after an incident takes place so if we are maintaining a complete volume hash and saving it on the computer somewhere if anything happens first thing you must do is to calculate the hash if there is a difference in that partition it means that the content has been changed for example we have selected the d drive on the computer and we are checking the sha3512 and mb5 and calculate it would test it and would give us a hash code for that specific directory once that's done you can add the results to the case file that you have created so that it would be added as part of the investigative analysis in the end we have customized workflows so that you can select which things you want first which things you want after this one and all the options will be appearing on here you can refresh them save them or lock the view with the password uh, and that's it as far as the investigation is concerned now once that's done you'll go to the start of the case or the manage the case uh, once all the investigative analysis are complete you'll simply generate a report and it would generate a report with all the findings included in it like if we'll click on generate report it would ask us that whether we want the report in HTML, JavaScript or HTML and PDF and then default what you would like to have complete report in HTML and uh, PDF copy the files evidences each and everything and where you want to store the file so once that's done you'll have a complete report of all the investigative analysis whatever you conducted on a hard drive i hope you understood the software now you can use your own external usb drives or the directories on the computer in order to conduct some basic investigations that's it for today thank you very much